Welcome to Beginning, Intermediate, and Advanced Playwriting. Beginning Playwriting, Lesson 1.2, Creating Theatrical Characters and Writing Theatrical Dialogue. When writing characters for the theater, remember, first of all, that you are writing characters that actors have to play. Actors want, above all, to make an impact on the audience. Playwrights want this, too, so we are in a symbiotic relationship with our actors. It is the playwright's job to devise characters that can be defined by theatrical behavior. Lights up on a farm kitchen. Enter a postman. He brings on a letter, puts it on the table, and exits. Uh, pretty boring. The actor is bored, and the audience is bored, too. But give the postman some behavior, and the audience, as well as the actor, will find it interesting. If this postman is extremely shy, he will stick his head through the door, look around carefully, scurry over and leave the letter, and then run out. If he is blind, he will walk into the door, excuse himself to the chair, tap his way to the table, put out the letter, drop it on the floor, and kick it under the rug. Another kind of postman will make sure he's alone and then surreptitiously open the letter and steal a beer while he enjoys reading the contents. All of these behaviors will work to characterize this postman as being different from any other. This makes the character interesting and entertaining. It also gives him behavior that will read from the stage. By read, in the theater, we mean that the entire audience will see and understand what is happening at the same time. Telling the story to the whole audience at the same time is important. Everyone in the audience pays the ticket price, and they all deserve to be told the whole story. So, nuance and understatement are not your friends in the theater. Nuance and understatement mean some people in the audience will see something, and others won't. The main facets of your story need to be writ large so that everyone in the room comprehends them at the same time. Depending on the size of the theater, for over half of them your actor may well be the size of a finger held up to the stage if they're sitting toward the back. So small gestures, small objects, small motions, and, well, nuance will not tell the story to everyone at the same time. It may read from the stage to the front rows, but it won't read from the stage to the back. Playwrights must write for the whole theater at once. Characters on the stage need to be bigger than life for them to read from the stage as normal-sized. If your background is in writing stories or screenplays, you'll need to scale up. Your theater characters may at first seem over the top to you, but over the top in the theater is good. That's what makes it theatrical. Note, if one character is over the top and the rest are not, rather than toning down the one character, scale the rest up. It will make better theater. Behaviors that work well on stage include talkative, shy, angry, frightened, loving, mean, sexy, paranoid, proud, humble, courageous, eager, demanding. As you imagine this behavior, you can see just what it looks like on a character. Any characterization that gives your actor strong behavior to play will work. This is why drunkenness is used so often in theater. Drunkenness is very strong theatrical behavior. Behaviors that will not work are such things as thoughtful, introverted, sympathetic, or patient. Seeing someone look thoughtful, introverted, sympathetic, or patient is not strong or clear behavior. To try out whether a behavior is theatrical, try crossing the room using that behavior. Will everyone watching be able to tell what the behavior is? Drunkenness works every time. Thoughtful will not read. Happy or depressed? eager or angry does. Patient will not. Now, choose a strongly theatrical behavior for a character. Think about that behavior as you write her entrance. She enters and does something on the stage. If she enters in a loving way, what does she do? If she is angry or heartbroken, how does she behave? This strong characterization based on behavior is a character cut. The term comes from rock cutting where you slice a dull gray rock to reveal a unique, gem-like aspect. Every character in every play you write must have a character cut to distinguish him or her on stage and give the actor something to play. You must always give your actor some behavior to play, because what you don't want is a character that enters and crosses the room giving away nothing about himself. It might as well not have happened. All strong characters are defined by their behavior. A character is defined by what he does. 
A crazy woman and a shy man meet at a bus stop. A heartbroken widow breaks into the home of her loutish sister-in-law. A drunken spinster opens the door to a desperate survivalist. If you want greater depths, more aspects to your character, then add a second character cut, and then a third. This will give you more material to work with in your play. A drunken postman who is heartbroken tries to give back all he has stolen in the past. An unrelenting optimist whose child has died discovers she is married to her sister's killer. A courageous and courteous scholar discovers that his uncle has murdered his father, stolen the crowd that should have been his, and incestuously married his mother. If you deconstruct any of the great dramatic characters, what you will find is a handful of strong character cuts. Here is your exercise in writing character cuts. Choose two characters. Give them both strong character cuts, and write an interchange between them. Don't think about plot or setting. This is just an isolated exercise to experiment with this single aspect of playwriting. Choose contrasting characters rather than similar ones. This is always a good idea. You don't want your audience to have any trouble knowing which character is which on stage. Charlie. Don't. Please don't hit me. Bonnie. Charlie, it's me. I would never hurt you. Charlie. But you did. Bonnie. That wasn't me. You made a mistake, didn't you? Charlie. Ow! Rod. The report is undeniable. Letty. To hell with your report. Look at the water. Rod. We have the data. If you look at the conclusion on page 36. Letty. Do you see that? Rod. It's not possible. Letty. Whatever you say, I'm going now. Write three exercises, giving each character about half a dozen lines to say. You will know that your character cut is working if saying the words you have written for them causes the behavior that you have chosen. If one character is belligerent and the other is shy, or one is slow of speech and the other is crazy, just saying the words consecutively and audibly will create the behavior. If one of the characters stands out and the other doesn't read, change the second one's character cut until she is equally dramatic. If two actors are performing in a scene and one has much better material to play than the other, it will read to the audience as though one is the better actor than the other. Don't be so unfair to the actors who will be working for you. Give them both really good stuff to work with. There are no people more fun to work with than actors who are happy with their parts. Now, about writing dramatic dialogue. If your play has a significant tension level, that is, at least a 4 on a scale of 1 to 10, then the dialogue in your play will be dramatic. If you have no tension on stage, you can't have dramatic dialogue, because it would then be out of proportion to what is happening. But when you have tension, dialogue becomes interesting. If you have tension and strong character cuts, then each character's lines and reactions will compel the audience's attention. You don't need any instruction on writing dialogue, because this is something you have been practicing all your life. If your dialogue is boring, look at your tension level and your character cuts. Raise the tension level, strengthen the character cuts, and then every word the characters utter will be interesting. Very often, the most interesting part of a character's line is the way other characters react to it. As one character says something powerful and significant, we look to the other character to see what they think of it. To get the most out of this reaction, write it into the text. Give the other character a line for their reaction. If you find you are writing lines that are several sentences long, break them up and write in the other character's reaction. This will make your play more theatrical, and it will increase the tempo as well. Use short lines especially those that provoke a response from other characters. This is an additional method of ensuring the audience's attention is on the stage. If you find yourself writing in your play, Hello, how are you? Please sit down. Look at your tension level. When tension is high, people can't talk that way. If the tension level on stage is low enough for your characters to be exchanging the time of day, your audience's attention is probably going to be drifting. If your character is saying hello, how are you, to a corpse, or please sit down to the man who has just been brought into the room in chains, then you're all right. To conclude, 
In any play you ever write, never create a character who doesn't have at least one character cut. And three is better. Here is a challenge for you. Is it possible to write a character that is too theatrical, whose character cuts are too strong? Will a director ever give you the note, you need to tone down this character? If you write to try and get that note, your play will be immensely theatrical. Go for it. In the next lesson, we will talk about structuring a short play. If you would like more information on playwriting, my manual, Playwriting, the Merciless Craft, Comprehensive Techniques for Mastering Beginning, Intermediate, and Advanced Playwriting, is available from Amazon as both an ebook or a paperback. If you have questions or comments, or are interested in a workshop or master's class, you can contact me through my website at thecarolwolf.com.